If you ask a scientist about the origins of the universe, the Big Bang is the answer you're most likely to get. Our universe is unimaginably huge, but it wasn't born that way, and it didn't exist that way forever either. The Big Bang Theory is an effort to explain that moment in time when our universe came into existence. According to the theory, our universe sprang into existence as a singularity around 13.7 billion years ago. But what is a singularity? Nobody knows for sure. Singularities are zones which defy our current understanding of physics. They are thought to exist at the core of black holes. Black holes are areas of intense compression where finite matter falls in on itself with such great pressure that it is compressed into infinite density, a mathematical concept which truly boggles the mind. Zones of infinite density are called singularities. Our universe is thought to have begun as one such singularity. An unbelievably tiny, infinitely hot, infinitely dense dot of compressed matter. After its initial appearance out of nothing, this dot of nothingness seems to have instantly inflated at a speed to rival a gigantic explosion, the Big Bang. It expanded and cooled, going from very small and infinitely hot to the size and temperature of our current universe. It continues to expand and cool down further to this day. This is the Big Bang Theory. It is only during the last hundred years or so that we have come to know how the universe actually came to be. But even so, there are a whole slew of facts most people, even many scientists, are not at all aware of. Here are top 10 facts about the Big Bang that will amaze you. Fact number one, Einstein at first dismissed this theory outright when it was presented to him as a possibility. In 1915, Einstein proposed a revolutionary new concept to replace Newton's original theory of gravity. Einstein dispensed with the idea of gravity as a magnetic force of attraction in favor of the idea that space tends to curve around the mass of an object. In effect, he discovered that the law of gravity is really a law of geometry. What actually happens is that the mass of a planet, or any mass for that matter, tends to cause the space around it to flow in a curve, rather than a straight line. The implication from this theory that starlight was bent by the mass of a planet was confirmed in 1919. This new theory now makes it possible for us to predict the orbit and motion of Mercury to an accuracy that Newton's theory could not. But it is also clear that a universe that is full of static matter unchanging over time is bound to be unstable. So when the Belgian priest and scientist Georges Lemaitre in 1927 put forth the idea that the space-time fabric of the universe could be very large and would continue expanding since it had emerged from a smaller, denser, more uniform state in the past. Einstein wrote back to him, Vos calculs sont correct, mais votre physique est abominable. Which means, your calculations are correct, but your physics is abominable. Fact number two, Hubble's discovery of other galaxies beyond the Milky Way served to confirm the idea of an expanding universe. Although many scientists before Einstein had independently arrived at the conclusion that the spiral nebulae in the sky were distant galaxies, it was Edwin Hubble's work in the late 1920s that showed this was not only true, but that the more distant a galaxy was, the faster it was moving away from us. This fact, Hubble's law, describing the expansion of the universe led to a very straightforward interpretation consistent with the Big Bang Theory. If the universe is expanding today, then it would have been smaller and denser in the past. Fact number three, the notion of an expanding universe had been around since 1922 but was widely dismissed for decades. The Soviet physicist Alexander Friedman pioneered the theory of the expansion of the universe in 1922 when it was criticized by Einstein. Lemaitre's work in 1927 confirming this was also dismissed by Einstein. And even after Hubble's work in 1929, the idea that the universe was smaller, denser and more uniform in the past was only a fringe idea. 
but Lemaitre added in the idea that the redshift drift of galaxies could be explained by this expansion of space, and that there must have been an initial moment of creation at the beginning, which was known as either the primeval atom or the cosmic egg for decades. Fact number four. The theory of the expansion of the universe rose to prominence in the 1940s, having contributed to a set of startling predictions. George Gamow was a Ukrainian-American theoretical physicist and cosmologist who worked with many of the pioneers of quantum theory. A supporter of Lemaitre's early ideas, he realized that if the universe was expanding today, then the wavelength of the light in it was increasing over time, and therefore the universe was cooling. He also reasoned that if the universe is cooling today, then it must have been hotter in the past. Extrapolating backwards, he recognized that there once was a time period when it was too hot for neutral atoms to form, and then a period before that where it was too hot for even atomic nuclei to form. Therefore, as the universe expanded and cooled, it must have formed the light elements and then neutral atoms for the first time resulting in the existence of a primeval fireball or a cosmic background of cold radiation just a few degrees above absolute zero. His predictions of cosmic microwave background radiation and his explanation of the present levels of hydrogen and helium in the universe together lent important theoretical support to the Big Bang Theory. Fact number five. The name Big Bang came about from the theory's most fervent detractor. Fred Hoyle. A theory making a different set of predictions, the steady state theory of the universe, was actually the leading theory of the universe in the 1940s, 1950s and well into the 1960s, as the claim that the vast majority of the atoms came from stars that died and not this early hot dense state was borne out by nuclear physics. Hoyle, speaking to the BBC, coined the term in a 1949 radio interview saying, one idea was that the universe started its life a finite time ago in a single huge explosion and that the present expansion is a relic of the violence of this explosion. This Big Bang idea seemed to me to be unsatisfactory even before detailed examination showed that it leads to serious difficulties. Fact number six. The 1964 discovery of the leftover glow from the Big Bang was initially thought to be from bird poop. In 1964, scientists Arno Penzias and Bob Wilson, working at the home Dell Horn antenna at Bell Labs, discovered a uniform radio signal coming from everywhere in the sky at once. Not realizing it was the Big Bang's leftover glow, they thought it was a problem with the antenna and tried to calibrate this noise away. When that didn't work, they went into the antenna and discovered nests of pigeons living in there. They cleaned the nests and droppings of the pigeons out of there, and yet the signal remained. The realization that it was the discovery of Gamow's prediction vindicated the Big Bang model, entrenching it as the scientific origin of our universe. It also makes Penzias and Wilson the only Nobel-winning scientists to clean up bird poop as part of their Nobel-worthy research. Fact number seven, the confirmation of the Big Bang gives us an explicit history for the formation of stars, galaxies and rocky planets in the universe. If the universe started off hot, dense, expanding and uniform, then not only would it cool and form atomic nuclei and neutral atoms, but it would take time for gravitation to pull objects together into gravitationally collapsed structures. The first stars would take 50 to 100 million years to form. The first galaxies wouldn't form for 150 to 250 million years. Milky Way sized galaxies might take billions of years and the first rocky planets wouldn't form until multiple generations of stars lived, burned through their fuel and died in catastrophic supernovae explosions. It may not be a coincidence that we are observing the universe now, 13.7 billion years after the Big Bang. It might be that this is when the time is ripe for life on rocky worlds to emerge. Fact number eight. The fluctuations in the cosmic microwave background tell us how close to perfectly uniform the universe was at the start of the Big Bang. 
The cosmic microwave background is just 2.725 Kelvin today. But the fluctuations seen earlier are only around minus 100 micro Kelvin in magnitude. The fact that the leftover glow from the Big Bang has slight non-uniformities of a particular magnitude at that early time tells us that the universe was uniform to the level of one part in 30,000. But the fluctuations are what give rise to all the structures, stars, galaxies, etc. that we see in the universe today. Fact number nine. The Big Bang itself doesn't necessarily mean that we are looking at the very beginning anymore. It's tempting to follow this hot, dense, expanding state all the way back to a singularity, as Lemaitre did some 89 years ago. But there's a whole bunch of observations, starting with the fluctuations in the primeval fireball, that teach us there was a different state prior to the original singularity from where our investigations begin. Prior to that, all the energy in the universe was contained within space itself, and that space expanded at an exponential rate. This period is known as cosmic inflation, and we are still researching the details on that. It seems that science is progressing farther and farther back into the deep recesses of time, but so far, there's no end in sight. And finally, fact number 10. The way the universe began doesn't tell us how it will end. The revelations from the Big Bang tell us that there was a race between forces of gravity trying to recollapse the expanding universe and the initial expansion process trying to drive everything apart. But the Big Bang on its own doesn't tell us where this process will finally lead. That will become clear from knowing what the entire universe is made out of. With the existence of dark energy discovered just 18 years ago, we've learned that not only will the expansion process win, but that the most distant galaxies will continue to speed up in their mad rush away from us. Our cold, lonely, empty fate is what we get in a dark energy universe. But if the universe were born with just a tiny bit more matter or radiation than what we have today, our fate could have been very different. We hope you like this presentation of facts on the Big Bang Theory. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to our channel. Your feedback is important to us.